not sign families. I have a question for you this week. I want to know if you could have one superpower, what would that superpower be? For me, that's an easy answer. I would want to be invisible. But when you ask Jack, he has a different answer every week. Sometimes he wants super strength. Sometimes he wants to see through walls. Sometimes he wants to be able to fly. He can't seem to make up his mind. But somebody asked me a follow-up question to that this week, and I have to admit it really got me thinking. I knew as soon as they said, what would your superpower be, that I would want to be invisible. And then they looked at me and said, yeah, but how could you use that to help others? Now, i got to confess to you that every time I've answered that question, I've never thought about my superpower helping other people. I've only thought about how the superpower would be great for me to have. So what superpower do you think would help the most people? You know, when Jesus was on earth to lots of people, they thought he had superpowers because he would walk around healing people. So there's a story in the Bible in the Gospel of Mark and it happens right after Jesus has gone through and he picked out his disciples. And so he was on his way to Andrew and Simon's house. Well, when they got to Simon's house, Simon's mother-in-law was really sick. She had a fever and she couldn't get out of bed. And Jesus just walked right over to her and he touched her hand and she got up, her fever was gone, she was healed. And they were amazed. Everybody around watching was totally impressed and amazed. So what they did is they took off running out the door and ran into town and told everybody, you're never going to believe this. There's a man at Andrew and Simon's house and he just healed this woman by touching her hand. Well, people thought that is impossible, right? Wrong. Nothing is impossible for God. So what happened was word got all around the town and everybody came and crammed into Simon and Andrew's house and they were lined up outside of the door. And so Jesus would heal them and he would heal them and he was touching and he was healing all of these people all day long and into the evening and into the night. And finally, late at night, Jesus snuck away from the house and he sat and he prayed. Well, his disciples were like, hey, where'd you go, Jesus? And so they went out looking for him. And they found Jesus alone praying. And they said, Jesus, what are you doing? There is still a long line. We're handing out numbers. People are waiting for you to come and heal them. But here's the big surprise to the story. Jesus told his disciples, no, we're not going back. No? How can Jesus say no? That doesn't sound right. But that's exactly what he said. And it's because Jesus knew that healing the sick wasn't his main purpose for being here. He had something much more important to do, an even greater superpower than just healing. In fact, he had the most amazing, greatest, spectacular, exciting, powerful superpower of all times. He could save souls. Anybody and everybody's soul. Anybody who was alive when Jesus walked on the earth, all the way up to the people to today and people into the future. Jesus could save their souls. Now that is a super duper power, if I do say so myself. Now, even though healing the sick was really important, Jesus knew that it wasn't as important as saving souls. So instead of returning to the house and working his way through that line of people, he got his disciples and he said, come on, we're gonna go. And they traveled around to different, different cities and they spread the word of God. And they preached and Jesus told stories and Jesus healed along the way and he did miracles along the way. And he was trying to get people to follow him and to know God so that they could have eternal life in heaven with him. He was saving souls. Now, I kind of wonder when I heard the story, like what must the people who were still standing in line outside of Simon's house, what must they been thinking? Like, where did Jesus go? Why, am I not important enough to, to heal? Where is he? Why did he abandon me? I can imagine that they were really frustrated, maybe disappointed, maybe angry, but it's because they couldn't see the bigger picture, the picture that Jesus could see. Jesus' focus wasn't just on healing. Jesus' focus was on saving their souls. Healing the body is a temporary thing that works on this earth, but healing your soul is a forever eternal life thing. So I want you to remember that sometimes you're not going to understand why things are happening in your, in your life the way they are, but you can only see a little tiny piece of it. It's like 
I know, watch. It's like these puzzle pieces. Look, they're tiny, they're little, they're confusing. They don't seem to fit together. This is all we can see. But Jesus sees the whole picture as finished. So we just have to have faith that he would never abandon us, never leave us. He will always use his superpower to save our souls and to be with us wherever we are. And for that, we should be most thankful because Jesus is the greatest superhero ever and he loves us. Let's pray. Amazing God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to save us all. Give us the strength to tell others about you and to be a light for you with all of our actions each and every day. Bless every child and every marriage and every household who hears this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I really miss seeing you guys, so I have a great idea. I want you this week to take a picture of yourself holding a sign that tells me what you would have for your superpower. If you text that to me or you email that to me, I'll send you a surprise back. Have a blessed week. Stay safe.